Gisela, I'm from Tafua and I like listening to Today FM, Today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, Today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Ulamila, I work at Golden Point Resort, I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rock. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Tonight, earthquake strikes New Zealand, two dead. Fiji residents speak about earthquake experience and abuse of children still not being reported. A series of powerful earthquakes jolted New Zealand's South Island early this morning, triggering a tsunami and sending aftershocks across the country that left at least two dead. The first event, a 7.8 magnitude quake, struck just after midnight near the coastal community of Kaikoura, some 93 kilometers northeast of the city of Christchurch, the U.S. Geological Survey reported. While other cities were affected, Kaikoura has been left devastated. Former Fiji citizens in earthquake-stricken parts of New Zealand are still coming to terms with the events of early this morning. While reports so far have confirmed all Fijians are safe, many have suffered property damage. Ritika Pratap has more. I was still awake. We were at home watching movies, so I could feel the start of the earthquake. So we, we ran in, um, in off the shelves and breaking. This was quite different to the other ones because uh, it just kept on until it just settled down. We have a phone call from a friend alerting us that the um, tsunami alarm has gone off. We needed to evacuate to higher grounds. So we pack hours off uh, this morning. Sexual abuse of children within Itauke communities is still not being reported to the appropriate authorities. The Itauke Affairs Ministry is now advising traditional leaders to take the responsibility of addressing the issue and to take necessary action. Kelly Vadala reports. Itauke Affairs Permanent Secretary Naipote Katoni Tambuo says many still live in the culture of silence and fail to report the ever-growing incidents of child sexual abuse. If you are spoiling children's life or women or young girls' life, eh? uh, I think the legal uh, way of taking that to take its own course, eh? the traditional customs of uh, Bulumbulu where you go and ask for forgiveness. Eh? UNICEF Pacific Chief of Child Protection Laisani Savo says seeking forgiveness traditionally is unacceptable as child abuse should not be tolerated in any community. Sometimes through culture we do have bulumbulu or there's a uh, ceremony where the adults go and ask for forgiveness for the reasons of maintaining peace in every community. But the scars are left for life for a child. I think Fiji has come out to openly discuss some of those issues. Yeah? Today the ministry reviewed its manual Nangonia na Isoli Solitali Nikalo, which addresses social issues like violence and abuse that children go through. The ministry first took up the baton for child protection in 2011. Initially, it was to assist with translation, and however, it expanded to include trainer of trainers to the development of a contextualized manual that deals with child protection within the Itoke communities. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Twelve people charged with sedition appeared in the Nandi Magistrates Court today for allegedly breaching their bail conditions. The 11 men and women had been on strict bail conditions. Ellen Stalls has more. Andi Duvu Ngavindi, Ratu Inoke, Tasere, Jimmy, Koroimbete, Eroni, Rikoriko, Peneasi, Nangao, Mosese, Navadi, Alifereti, Devita, Makutu, Seru, Kunalangi, Raidula, Rokovo, Chorama, Ratulevu have all had their bail revoked. The 12 are charged with one count each of sedition and one count each of inciting communal antagonism. It's alleged they held a meeting in Nandi which is in direct contravention of their bail conditions. Representing the first, seventh and eleventh accused, Nico Nawaikula requested that his clients be released on bail. The rest of the accused 
are represented by lawyer Aman Ravindra Singh, who was unable to make it to court. A colleague stood in and asked the court to defer the plea until tomorrow. State objected to bail and called for all the accused to remain in police custody. All 12 persons have been denied bail and will remain in remand until November 28th when they will take their plea. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. A rape suspect who was on the run for more than two months is now in custody at the Lambasa police station. Avinesh Kumar Raj, also known as Vinesh Kumar Raj, was detained in Lambasa last night from a farmer's house following a tip-off. Police spokesperson Ananai Soro confirms that Raj is wanted for his alleged involvement in three rape cases. Raj escaped from St. Giles Hospital in August, where he was admitted for evaluation as he was trying to harm himself following his arrest. A bench warrant was also issued against him for cases of obtaining advantage by deception. Coming up on FBC News, fishery stock theft, a major concern for the region. And Boer women work on handicraft show. Stay with us. It's me, Simsta, here, right from the Rekineki town. Our super breakfast show me my sunta hoon. Jab breakfast show me rehta hai Ashneel aur Sangeeta ke saath. Kese ke saath sunte sunte kiaara se do. You know something? Regularly, Mirchi FM is hot. I am Shweta, I am Kushan Osori, but my FM is Mirchi FM. My name is Jabir, we are in Mirchi FM. We are all in Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. Welcome back. This is FBC News. The Pacific region loses about $7 billion worth of its fish stock to theft every two to three years. This was revealed by the Pacific Islands Forum Fisheries Agency Director General James Movic while opening a regional information management facility workshop in Suva. Anna Ravulo has more. The 18 participants from different Pacific Islands will be provided with information management tools, including a new mobile phone application to assist with tracking of their fishery stock. We've been diverting a lot of our attention towards the uh, surveillance side of operations, um, and, and it's been very important and very useful. But we realize also that uh, it was distracting us from other areas that we believe on the basis of our experience over the last several years to be the real areas of concern with regard to IUU fishing. The FFA says that there have been various statements coming out about the level of illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing in the region. Hopefully with uh, what FFA has done, it will help uh, us integrate the work that each unit is doing uh, in isolation and uh, that way it will also help with our information sharing. FFA says data sharing, monitoring, control and surveillance tools are a key part of the feature of fisheries actions against illegal legal, unregulated and unreported fishing in the Pacific's exclusive economic zone. Anna Ravulo, FPC News. Residents living in Ba and surrounding areas will be able to access health services at the new Ba Hospital in the next four months. Acting Prime Minister and Attorney General Aya Said Kayum and Minister for Health and Medical Services Rosie Akbar visited the site and were updated on the progress of the construction work at the new hospital. Project Manager Sanjit Sharma says the hospital is designed with a modernized health standard and the new infrastructure is being designed with a budget of $30 million. The new 70-bed hospital will house a birthing facility, antenatal, dental and two operating theatres, laboratory, x-ray, dental and pharmaceutical facilities. Sharma says the initial construction work was delayed due to Cyclone Winston. The Ministry of Industry and Trade has rolled out a massive exercise across Australia to secure more investors. Following Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama's official visit to Sydney, Fiji's Trade Commission has hit the road running. Edwin Nunn reports. Fiji's agriculture industry, a growing information technology sector and tourism are being marketed to keen investors. The key audience that we were targeting were in particular those businesses uh, and senior executives who didn't know about Fiji as a business destination. Uh, so they don't have business interest here, 
but they were potential investors that we could uh, convince or persuade to consider Fiji as an investment destination. Successful businesses which have thrived in Fiji were also present at a trade expo speaking with investors. The Trade Commission office in Australia is already receiving queries from potential businesses who are being shown prepackaged proposals. What we're doing at the moment is we're calling each of the 150 uh, delegates or attendees who participated in the symposium. We're following up with them, getting their views in terms of uh, the information that was presented to them, what sort of assistance and guidance they need. Uh, we're trying to connect them as well to the government agencies that participated in the symposium. The single window registration system with Investment Fiji basically now um, sort of puts on an electronic platform um, you know, the ability to register your business, get approval from um, Investment Fiji, Reserve Bank, FERCA, and the uh, registrar of companies um, without actually coming to Fiji. The ministry admits Australia's interest has dropped in recent years, but is optimistic it will soon become the number one investment destination given the renewed interest from major businesses. Edwin Nand, FBC News. Waste management remains a major challenge for the Nasinu Town Council. Chief Executive Akhtar Ali says with the increase of population in the area, it is getting difficult and costly to dispose of waste. Ali says waste management is a very complex issue for all municipal councils and fundamentally it's the most important aspect of their operations. If you look at the population for all municipal councils and in terms of the waste generated, our responsibility to ensure that the waste is collected and disposed on time. It's a, it's a very expensive uh, We are fortunate that the government gave us three new compactor trucks this year, and that has really assisted us. Handicrafts unique only to the province of Mboa will be showcased at the 2017 Women's Expo in Suva. The Mboa Women's Group held a craft show this week to display various handicrafts from all over the province. Eleanor Trangavi reports. A variety of traditional artifacts through sewing, weaving, screen printing and many more craft women in the Boer province are well known for. Minister for Women Mariseni Bunuwanga says she is overwhelmed with the display at the Boer Women's Craft Show and also the talent of the women. This is one of those provinces that was um, hit by Winston, but uh, this today shows the resilience of women, eh? being able to pick themselves up and uh, produce the fine art and craft that they've shown here today. And some of them are ready to be licensed as Fijian craft, uh, crafted, which means that it's reached a certain level that's fit enough to earn that uh, particular um, mark. A few women will then be chosen by the Ministry and the Fiji Arts Council to showcase their craft at the Fiji Women's Expo in Suva next year. Fiji Arts Council comes in, looks at these items and sees which is um, good or which can be just uh, be given a bit more effort to showcase at the Women's Expo, the annual Women's Expo. Uh, the Women's Expo we're looking at now will be in uh, June 2017 in Suva. So there will be a number of women handpicked from this craft show who will go and showcase their wares at the Women's Expo. Eh? hoping to establish markets, be able to sell these wares, so that when they come back to their villages, they have a source of income. The craft show was held during the Andimbo Festival, an annual event in which all 54 villages and nine districts within the province take part in to raise funds towards the development projects of the villages. The women raised close to $43,000 in the opening of the three-day festival, which ended on Friday. Eleanor Turangaviu, FBC News. Airports Fiji Limited is fully compliant with the various requirements and regulations under the Civil Aviation Authority of Fiji, says AFL General Manager Traffic Management and Aviation, Ise Tundrao. He made these comments in submissions to the Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and Defence, who met in Namaka this morning. Tundrao says while AFL is a state-owned enterprise and it is their aim to operate effectively and efficiently to deliver on services they promise, he also highlighted that they take the issue of bomb threats very seriously and that there have been several bomb threats that happened in the first quarter of this year. Some cases are before the courts. Sports is up next. Here's Jamie with all the very latest. Good evening. Up ahead in sports. 
Fiji walks away empty-handed from annual World Rugby Awards. And Bar shifts focus to OFC Champions League. This and more after the break. from uh, Batam. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sadakau from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Grove Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic music. I'm Saini Sakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fiji has missed out on all the awards it was nominated for at the World Rugby Awards 2016 in England today. For the first time, Fiji was nominated in three categories, but the event was not dominated by the New Zealand All Blacks. The Vodafone Fiji 7 squad is upping the tempo as the start of the Sevens World Series draws near. Interim coach Nathan Eli, the one in Buka, says the team will be putting a lot of emphasis on fitness and game plans in the next two weeks. The one in Buka is expected to name the final 12-member squad for the Dubai and South Africa Sevens by the end of this week. Improve our game. There are aspects of our game in terms of attack and defense that we'll need to sharpen up. Uh, so we'll have a look at the games, we'll review and just you know have a look at them individually. Uh, we'll talk on what they need to improve on. There will be some new players in this squad that'll go. There has to be new players. It's a transition phase and we're looking, you know, for the long uh, for the long haul uh, in terms of the four-year cycle. So uh, expect some new faces in the, the new uh, series, uh, just like any any squad traveling out. Vodafone Flying Fijians coach John McKee says his team needs to get everything right before they take on England this week. He admits they need to put in a lot of work on breakdown areas and set plays, which will be crucial against an English side that remains unbeaten in its last 10 matches. Meanwhile, former Fiji Sevens coach Ben Ryan has denied a London Daily Mail report that he will be joining the Flying Fijians camp this week. We've got to be a lot better next week, I think. The, uh, you know, the, this game, although we didn't play well, will put us in good stead in our preparation for next week. It'll give us some good reference points. Um, certainly, you know, there's, there's some key areas of a game. You know, we know, you know, against England, you know, we, we, we need to get our exits right. You know, if we get if we exit poorly, you know, we'll be punished. Fiji plays England at 3:30 a.m. on Sunday, and you can watch the match live on FBC TV. The Mbah football team has once again proved its dominance in the local arena by claiming the Vodafone Premier League title. The side drew nil all with Lambasi yesterday to finish on top of the league standings with 32 points. Vasnil Prasad reports. All hard work throughout the season paid off for the Bar football team, winning its 20th league title at home. All the Bar fans who always come in numbers to support, uh, support the team. And not only now, Almighty, for giving us the strength and the victory. Bar lost only two matches during the season, an achievement for the men in black. Look at the league. Um, we had already won the league before even the last game that we played today. But then it was a community that we had to play. But actually we won the game before. Bar has also sealed a place in the OFC Champions League for the ninth time and will begin its preparation soon. We will prepare well for the O-League and we will want to see that we do well during the O-League um, this, uh, this year. Along with Ba, Rewa has also booked a spot in the Champions League after finishing second on the standings with 29 points. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. 32 teams will take part in the annual Mbule FM Maras Volleyball Tournament this week. 24 teams will compete in the men's category with 8 teams. While well, eight teams make up the women's division, the women, the men's winner walks away with four thousand dollars, while the winner of the women's category gets three thousand dollars. Well, we had uh, three build-up tournaments uh, before this uh, weekend. Uh, we had two in Suba and one in the Western Division, uh, which uh, we gave a chance to the clubs in the Western Division to uh, come in and participate and qualify. 17-year-old Zane Ayuk will join the Kelston Boys High School Sports Academy in New Zealand on a two-year scholarship. 
Ayuk, who has been playing hockey since the age of seven, says he didn't expect such a huge opportunity to come his way. He's the second from his local club, Geotech Maris Hockey, to earn an overseas hockey scholarship. The Maris Brothers High School student is the son of Anna Finau, a former national hockey rep. He says the scholarship will boost his skills in the sport and is looking forward to the opportunities that await him. Hopefully to improve my hockey, um, try and better myself that side um, and give education. Ayoko will live for Kel leave for Kelston Boys in January next year. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. <laughs>The Ministry of Education, together with Turners and Growers Fiji Limited, have launched a fruit distribution to all schools in an effort to reduce non-communicable diseases. Turners and Growers Silver Branch Manager Damendra Vijay says the initiative was also put in place to help students help after tropical cyclone Winston. More than 40 cartons of kiwi fruits were today distributed to Swami Shraddhanand Memorial Primary School in Nambua. We moved to Central and, and this is the last phase after this. All the schools in Fiji will be completed with the distrib distribution for the spirit fruit. Basically, we're trying to get children to start consuming fruits rather than, you know, eating something which is unhealthy. It was a hot, breezy day across Fiji with many clear skies. Looking at the temperatures, they were moderate in most centres, with Lombasa, Nandi and Lautoka being the warmer centres at 32 degrees. Savo Savo was the coolest at 29. For tomorrow, cool breezes with sunny skies is expected around Fiji. And a further outlook, we're looking on to Wednesday. Much of the country will enjoy warm conditions with sunny spells and cool south winds. At sea east to southeast winds, 10 to 15 knots, moderate seas. And recapping the main stories for tonight, earthquake strikes New Zealand with two confirmed dead. Fiji residents safe in New Zealand after earthquake and abuse of children still not being reported. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. We are now able to we are not able, sorry, to bring you the results from last week's poll question due to technical difficulties. But this week we are asking, is social media becoming a problem for Fiji? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. And before I go, the moon doesn't get much bigger and brighter than this. Tonight, Earthlings will be treated to a so-called supermoon, the closest full moon of the year. Monday, supermoon will be extra super. It will be the closest the moon comes to us in almost 69 years and it won't happen again for another 18 years, so enjoy it. From the team and I, good night. Bula FM number 2 and a series.